Right guys, the lateral delts. I know this is a very, very, very popular topic because if any, any time I post anything about the delts, people are like, I can't get mine to grow, I can't get mine to grow. So we're back at the muscular system. The reason being is that I want you to understand a little bit of the anatomy. So let's have a look. Just like I was talking about the rear delts, your attachment points um, for your lateral delts, very similarly to the, to the rear delts, and then insert into the top of the uh, humerus. Now, something we've got to consider, when you have the delt here, okay, it's abduction. So this movement, abduction. You then have the upper trap muscles, which do elevation, okay? Shortening of these fibers. So to train these in isolation and elevate at the same time, we're not going to fully shorten these muscles. So the goal is to try and get as much length from these muscles as possible and abducting the arm up to the side to try and get them as short as possible. The number one reason why people cannot build their lateral delts effectively is because they're recruiting all of these muscles, all of these muscles by bending the knees and throwing as much load up as possible. Looking at that anatomy chart, they are not big muscles. So the more load you throw through them, the bigger the chance of an injury, the less you're going to use the muscles themselves, and the less you're going to challenge all the fibers through their contractile range. So again, with the rear delts, they respond to a lot of work. There is plenty of areas in which you can create variety to this exercise, and I'm going to take you through them. Um, so let's get in the gym. Last little thing before we go, remember, this contributes very minimally to the development of the lateral heads. So the more that you shrug up and throw weights around, the more development you're gonna have in your upper traps and the less you're gonna have in your rear, in your lateral delts. So guys, moving out of the um, anatomy lesson I just gave you then, let's look at the exercise section. So when it comes to the lateral delts, I am gonna tell you, use less weight. And why am I gonna tell you to use less weight? Because you've gotta learn how to use the correct muscles. And honestly, you've got the top rack of the dumbbells and to the point where you're in control of the dumbbells, actually doing a little bit of momentum dumbbell um, raises is not going to be a bad thing. However, for most people, the predominant dominant muscle group of their upper back is always going to be the traps. So the first muscle that most people use when it comes to doing lateral raises is the traps. Now, with me on the other hand, because I'm actually experienced, when I do a heavier lateral raise, the first part of the movement comes from here and then I have a little bit of a lift, okay? And that means that I'm initiating with my lateral delts and then finishing with a little bit of trap. And that's where I get a lot more out of the exercise. For most people, dropping the weight is going to be key. So, I'm going to grab the dumbbells and we're going to have a look at the lateral delt. So, from this position here, I'm going to tell you this. From down here, because there's actually no load coming through the lateral delts, the tension on the delts is very minimal. We can get tension there from a completely different exercise. So we're going to start with tension. And what I just remember this here, there's no direct load coming through my deltoids. So if we do that, at that point now, there is tension on my delts. Now, the minute that you round and the minute that you're going to start lifting from your traps. So you sit tall, your abs tight, you keep the tension on the delts, and all you want to do is move like an inch. When you move an inch, you'll actually feel the delts moving. And just like we did with the rear delt machine, get used to that feeling of the delts. And then without any shrugging, you're going to lift, pushing the dumbbells away from you, just like you did with the lateral delts. So you're going to push away. Now, if you push away and the traps come in, you're going to use an active range of movement until your traps kick in and if, if that's all you've got to start with that's all you're going to do maintaining tension on the trap on the lateral delts and then as time goes by you'll find that you can reach further away and get up to a fully shortened position about here with the with the um, uh, with the dumbbells so you're going to work from this position here contract down keep the tension on chest up and lift. Now, the other thing you want to watch is as you're coming up, if the lateral delts are very weak and your 
anterior deltas are stronger, which they will be, you will naturally arch your back, rotate and lift. The minute that you rotate, the load is actually through the anterior delts and not the medial delts. Slight rotation will place the tension elsewhere. Similarly, if you start leaning forward and rotating inwards, which is rare, but it can happen, the tension is going to move to the lateral delts. So remember, chest up, dumbbells out by the side, lift up to the top with full tension hold. For most people, you will shake. Why do you shake? It's because you're weak. So you up to the top, hold the position, keep the lateral delts on, down, don't lose tension. Here, you've lost it. Here, it's on. And you hold and reach away. That as an exercise, if you nail it, will add a lot of size to your lateral delts in a very, very short space of time. But again, extremity execution, nail it from the, that, that range where we start, right up to the fully shortened position. Don't use a heavy load. And I'll talk about some repetitions um, and sets and loading parameters when we finish the next exercise. So guys, one of the things about training the lateral delts is that I was telling you with dumbbells that there is no tension down at the bottom. Every gym has a cable crossover station. And one of the advantageous things about the cable crossover station is that the load is coming from this direction here. So if I stand with the cable, I've got an immediate amount of tension in these lower fibers of my rear lateral delts here. When I'm here with no weight and the dumbbells, just when I've got a weight through my hands, there is no tension. So when we do a bilateral exercise, both arms, and I place the cables at about just below my knuckles, which means the tension is gonna be greatest at the bottom and get lighter to the top. And because I've already done this, this range of movement with the dumbbells, I'm not too bothered about that. What I'm looking for is with my shoulders back and my lower traps activated, my abs nice and tight, I'm looking to squeeze away from me in this position here. So I'm looking to squeeze away, not up with my traps, I'm looking to squeeze away. And what I'm gonna be doing with this is actually training the portion and the lower, the, the, the fibers of the lateral delts that I've actually missed. So I'm not getting any internal rotation, I'm not leaning back, I'm training the lower fibers that I've missed. And if you want your complete deltoids, then you're gonna to wanna to train the lower fibers, the mid fibers, and the top fibers, the fully shortened fibers of the lateral delts to get that density, that thickness in your lateral delts. So you're squeezing away, in, squeezing away. And the key here is to maintain tension at all times. No lifting, no reaching, no rolling forward, and maintain tension. So guys, we've had a look at the lateral delts. Now, again, you know, trying to recreate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different exercises when the actual movement we're trying to look for is this abduction. Most people try and do loads of different exercises because the delts don't grow. But going back to the foundational steps of exercise execution, looking at initiating with the working muscle, but most important, the extremity of the ranges. So we have the fully shortened range of the, of the lateral delts without the trap or internal rotation. And we have right down here, where we have the trap in its kind of length and range. And remember that when we use dumbbells, there's very minimal going on here at all. So by bringing the cables in as we just did, we've got this range covered, and then the dumbbell can kind of cover that range there. Now, how do we really get the effectiveness out of training the lateral delts? Well, like I said, short rest periods, mix in between kind of eight to 10, up to 25, 30 repetitions on the lateral delts. They don't respond really by just doing two or three sets. So what you could do is train the shortened range first with the dumbbells. I sometimes go with a lighter dumbbell and training that shorter range here, okay? I then pick up a heavier dumbbell and work in this range here where I'm naturally stronger. And then I'll go over to the cables and I'll work in this bottom range here. That could be a really nice little tricep. Or on its own, I can actually work through this full range here, okay? with a light enough dumbbell to make sure I get fully short. Then I can actually do some heavier, once I've learned all the tension techniques, more uh, kind of slightly forced uh, heavier dumbbells. So I'm actually getting a little bit more load in this mid range. And then I can go over and do the actual cable as a lower, lower exercise. 
What I prefer to do, if I'm absolutely honest with deltoids, is I like to do like a lateral raise exercise into a rear delt exercise, into a lateral delt exercise, into a rear delt exercise. So it's like a giant set, but I'm doing two for rear delts and two for lateral heads. I also do down the rack, which for years I've done, and I really, really like that, where I'll start with a heavier weight and I'll go all the way down the rack, but the heavier weight might be 15, 17 kilos, really trying to get up to here, and then bringing myself down, all the way down the rack to the point where I'm absolutely shattered, six or seven drop sets, and then I can finish on the cable and just wrap out in this fully shortened uh, length and range. So there's so many different variations when it comes to lateral delts. The other thing I'll say is this, training frequently. If you're training your lateral delts, you're training your rear delts, you're training your delts in general once a week, guys, they won't grow. I had shoulder reconstruction, as you know, in this shoulder and an AC joint separation. My shoulders have really, really become a good body part for me and I want them even better. But I was somebody that thought, um, they're not gonna respond, but they do. They respond if you train them frequently. What I mean by that is you could actually get to the end of a chest workout and do eight to nine sets for your deltoids. So you might pick lateral delts on chest day. You can do back and then tag on seven or eight to 10 sets of rear delts at the end of back day. You've then got shoulder day to come on its own. So you were hitting shoulders there. So in themselves, you're hitting them kind of three times a week. Or if you really want them to grow and your lateral delts are weak, you can do, say you train chest on Monday with lateral delts at the end. Thursday, you can do back and you can do lateral delts at the end. Uh, and you've got back, you've got rear delts in back anyway. Saturday, you can do delts, and then you've got uh, lateral delts tagging on at the end as a met priority, or start with lateral delts as well, because if you train a weak body part uh, at the beginning of the workout, remember, you're gonna put a lot more into it anyway. So three times a week, hitting them hard, but you've also got the opportunity to train your major body parts at the beginning of the session and tag them on to get that frequency. So you've got so many different options, no reason why anybody's shoulders won't grow. And just remember guys, if other muscles do grow and your shoulders don't grow, it's actually down to what you don't know and down to execution. So you've got to start at the foundational level and you've got to learn how to get the muscles strong. You've got to learn how to keep tension, execute from the extremities and then bring in all the intensifying techniques. And I promise you, if you do, your lateral delts will grow.